Hello, networkers, and welcome back to another episode of Ask the Network Engineer. And in this episode, we are continuing our conversation of talking about the job process and things to keep in mind. Once again, this is based on a collaborative um, initiative that I did of talking with various colleagues of mine, including my wife, on particular things that network engineers should keep in mind for the job process. So now we're at step number three, which is the phone interview. Now, some companies don't do phone interviews, some do. Now, more environments, it is important, and I'll get into all of that. So the phone interview process means that you submitted your resume, and from there, the company saw the resume and liked what they saw. The spelling, the type of work that is listed on the resume, they like what they see. So now they have to um, like what they hear. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. So once more, the phone interview process is something that a lot of companies are doing. And it is a very quick process of what they do, about 10 to 15 minutes. And the purpose of that is to actually hear you and how you communicate and other questions that will come up. This will be their final determination if you should come in for the in-person interview, which is the big one. So what are some of the things that are important that you should keep in mind and what employers look at, including what I look at when I do a phone interview? So I've done a lot of phone interviews. This is basically how I can figure out which ones uh, meet particular requirements, what is the best fit for the department that they're coming in, and then determining if they should come in for a extensive interview for technical, personality, everything. So the number one thing that is important that a lot of people look forward to, and they take note of, I mean, is the level of energy, the excitement, the interest. How are you excited about this opportunity? I have always been very excited about various opportunities. Um, I remember when I was, um, I was approached by the Department of Energy for an opportunity at one of their laboratories, a backbone infrastructure, a 10,000 plus user campus. I was so excited. And that is what needs to come off. Because what the company is doing is that they're listening. And are you going to give a job response or a career response? Now, a person who wants a career in networking, your excitement, your interest is going to show. So there's nothing to practice with that. But if you're applying for a job because you just need a job, it will become more challenging. That doesn't mean that you won't get the job. Just keep that in mind. But the excitement shows how it shows your it shows more about your personality, because, you know, remember, you'd be working with people as a network person. You're working with different departments. You got desktop departments, server departments, different management teams, project managers. So this level of excitement is important of team dynamics. And you should be excited about an opportunity. So definitely keep that in mind. What's also important is communication. Now on the resume component, it was important to focus on the written communication, the spelling, the grammar, the proofreading that was involved. Well, with communication during the phone interview, this deals with verbal communication. So what's important is speaking very clear but also sounding very confident. Confidence is a very big key because once more, as a network engineer, you have a lot of responsibility. Management, your company could be giving you the keys to the entire network. So you have to be confident in yourself because that's going to portray how confident you are for managing that network. If you're like unsure, you're like, well, oh, I think I would do this. I think I'll do that. That doesn't come off confident. And that will concern the management team because that kind of behavior could happen um, in terms of affecting the network or the network going down. 
So that's really, really important is the confidence aspect. I really seen this many, many times. A company does not like that. For example, I was, this is a long time ago, probably back in 2001. And there was a, a particular environment I was applying for. And I you know, went ahead and interviewed and got the job. But before that, this company had a broadcast storm. It brought down the entire network. And the two network engineers there, they were flustered. They panicked. And they were down for four to six hours. It was a very bad experience. The company did not like that because their network engineers were not confident in what was going on or how to troubleshoot. It was horrible. And probably a week after that experience for that company, they fired one of those people. And that's how I eventually got into that environment. And then within a month, the other network engineer was fired. They did not like the lack of confidence. It affected their business. So your communication um, and how you come off confident is very, very important. You got to keep that in mind. As a network engineer, again, you can affect everything. I mean, users, servers, clients, everything could go down. So you got to be confident in yourself. That's really, really important. What's also important is be prepared to answer questions that the employer will ask. Now, it could be kind of tough because you're not sure what kind of questions they could be asking. But specifically, you want to be prepared to answer questions about yourself that they could they could ask you about what you want for your career. You know, something more about your personality. Be prepared. You know, there's nothing wrong with looking into the mirror and practicing, rehearsing what you're going to say. There's nothing wrong with that because when you come prepared, it comes off confident. Be prepared to give examples of various work and projects that you did. Now, keep in mind that when it comes to the in-person interview, they'll probably ask more questions about that. But be prepared to have um, answers, um, you know, prepared for the questions that will be asked you. That's really, really important. So the bottom line when it comes to the phone interview and what is very, very important is the communication, the verbal communication is what the company is paying attention to. Being confident, speaking very clearly, because once again, you could be communicating with different groups and managements on issues or projects. So for this, just be yourself, practice, rehearse, and be prepared to answer questions that are likely to come up. That will come off very, very confident and what management likes. I do it all the time. It's almost to the point that it's very easy because you have to rehearse. The more you do it, it's gonna come off very, very polished. So keep that in mind. The other thing is honesty. You have to be very, very honest during the entire process of the interview. Phone, in person, that's really important because that will um, equal to the credibility and how the company will trust you. Once more, I'm going to say it many, many times because this is what many companies talk about as their concern. They're giving you the keys to manage the network, configuration, support, and all of that. They don't want someone that they can't trust or is not credible for managing their network and keeping the best intentions of their network in mind. They don't want outages, so they don't want you um, being a rogue of logging on to routers and switches and tinkering with commands that could bring things down. I have seen people do that and they have lost their jobs because of that. Don't do that. So you got to be honest whether you are working or even during the interview process. So when it comes to the interview process itself, say what you know and what you do not know. That will go a long ways and it will show a little bit of credibility and a little bit of how confident you are. So let's say that on your resume, you have OSPF configuration. Well, I do this all the time. I ask people, well, what do you know specifically about OSPF and your practical involvement with that routing protocol? A lot of people kind of stumble around that question. Just be honest. Just be yourself. 
just say, well, you know, I configured OSPF, you know, part of a team, but we configured basically our backbone that contains our WAN, um, aggregation routers, our core, and the OSPF backbone area. And we have our access switches, we have our remote sites configured in different areas. We did a little bit of route uh, redistribution. We did a little bit of distribution routes being forwarded between different areas. That's all we did. That is nothing wrong with saying that because that's showing you what you have exposure to. When I interview people, I ask them questions just to see how they answer it. They may get it wrong or they may not know. My job is to put pressure on you to see how do you answer the questions. Are you credible? Can I trust you to be in my department? And if you're lying, then that's going to be a big problem that will, again, have less credibility for you to be managing a large enterprise network. Honesty is key. And of course, being humble. So those are things to keep in mind about the interview process. But once more, the communications, the verbal communications is very, very important. And that is it. It's a very quick segment because the phone interview is 10 or 15 minutes. It's a very quick thing that a company does to see or I'm sorry, hear how you communicate and to make their final determination if you should go in for the in-person interview. Now, that's what we're going to talk about the next time. And that has a lot of moving parts and really kind of a summary of everything that we have talked about so far about honesty, communication, being prepared. But we'll talk all about that next time. So thank you for watching this video and please subscribe. Please post your comments below about your experiences of applying for jobs and the challenges for that, what you're doing for applying for jobs as a network engineer and the type of jobs you're applying for. And this will be part of further conversations that we will have for this series. So once again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time when we get into the in-person interview. That's when it gets very, very serious.